This week on Hip Hop Now Podcast, my thoughts on the new Young M.A. EP, a possible outcast reunion, and hear me out, designer tweets FNY Radio and then deletes it. Go figure. Read these headlines. This album must be gone. This album must be gone. This album must be gone. Come to Hip Hop Podcast. What up, y'all? I am your host, Vegas, and this is Hip Hop Now Podcast right here on SoundCloud.com slash Hip Hop Politic. And of course, Death Star Radio at DSR.FM. The app is available online on your mobile device. All of that at iOS. Whether you know, if you don't know what iOS is, that's Apple, whatever Apple device, Android. Whatever Android device you have, it's available in both places. And um, I appreciate those that have been listening and standing by for such a long time now. Not that long, but you know what I mean. Uh, But I definitely also appreciate new listeners. And I just want to say, you know, a little little disclaimer before we get into the business at hand uh, that I appreciate everybody who listens to this podcast you know, whether you're a person who is in and out or a person that is, uh, you know, true blue faithful, listen all the time or you stumbled across it. Uh, but the number one thing, if you enjoy what I do on this podcast, which is provide you with news, rumors, reviews, reactions and perspectives on hip hop music and culture as it happens week to week, what you need to do definitely is subscribe hit that like button tell me your thoughts it's not just about what i think about it it's also about your thoughts so you got to comment in the comment sections i try to read as much as possible and definitely subscribe and share i think i said subscribe subscribe before but i i don't know uh but do both of them (laughs) but make sure to share it with people you know would enjoy this podcast as well whether that's on twitter retweeting facebook sharing it with other individuals whatever it may be share it with like-minded people who may enjoy this podcast i try to keep it short because i'm busy you're busy let's get it happening you know what i'm saying we all enjoy hip-hop but let's get right into the business don't forget to follow me on social media at vegas world inc and facebook is facebook.com slash hip-hop right now let's get right to it DMX and the Locks will headline the 2017 Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival. I believe this festival is going on. It's it's been a while. The 13th year this uh, Brooklyn Festival. I I hate to say it, but yo, I I've never been to one. Sorry, y'all. I've never been to one. They're pretty dope. Every time I say I'm going to go, something comes up and I don't go. But DMX and the Locks are going to headline it. Uh, There'll also be uh, a couple of other people. Let's see. They put a a twos. uh, twos. I'm really off today. Uh, (laughs) They put a post on Instagram. You can follow them at BK Hip Hop Fest. Uh, Brooklyn Bodega presents the 13th annual Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival, July 10th through the 16th. From the Planet of Brooklyn, headlined by DMX and the Locks, also featuring Dreamville Records' own Bass uh, or Boss. How you say his name? Boss or Bass? I can't remember. Kaz and Omen, you know, Dreamville, if you don't know, that's that's J. Cole's peoples. Stretch and Barbito will be there, Mr. C, Ocean. And uh, also, there'll be an interview with the legendary Rakim talking about 30 years of his debut album, Eric B. and Rakim, paid in full. Now, if you didn't know, 2017 marks the 30th anniversary of Paid in Full. Not just a classic hip-hop album, in a sense, but the first time, again, I I feel like a broken record when I say this, but I'm going to say it. The first time we realized that we weren't going to uh, get Yes, Yes, Y'all to death. You know what I mean? Uh, (laughs) 
Rakim put an end to that. And this album was definitely the nail in the coffin to basically the rap that you see on the get down. When you watch the get down on Netflix, paid in full was like the end of that era of rapping, that style of rapping. Um, and I'm also definitely going to try to write a uh, review, like a today review or perspective or introspective, retrospective. That's what I meant to say of um, the album, my feelings on it. Uh, on the shadow league.com you sh you should check out the shadow league.com not only is it hip-hop but it's also sports and a number of other articles there but i'm a contributing uh, contributing writer there and um, i've done a couple of things but be on the lookout for that that should be coming up in july because the anniversary is in july but the brooklyn festival if you like what you hear it's gonna be some other people there like earth gang and all of that so if you like what you you know hear on that lineup and you know you in the New York City area or maybe you take a trip from wherever you may be and you come out, you know what I'm saying? And you um you take part in that, you know. It's maybe maybe you'll see me out there. Maybe I'll make it there this time. Uh Snoop Dogg reveals official cover art for his upcoming album Never Left. Now, I hope this ain't one of those albums where you know, you kind of feel like, yo, I hope this is a return to form, meaning Dr. Dre produced almost all of it. Uh, this being Snoop Dogg's 15th studio album. Snoop has 15 studio albums. Uh, it's going to drop on May 19th. And uh, last year's 2016 uh, Kool-Aid, which the title may sound like some trash, but the album was pretty good, to be honest. Uh, but the album cover that he released, he did it on his Instagram page at Snoop Dogg. Uh, don't forget the double G's at the end of the dog. And it's a throwback picture of young Snoop with the with the white baseball cap on, the, the Jerry curl with the earring, you know, with a with a sign that says East California 187. And then the title to the album Never Left is sitting right there on the uh, same street post. I am now this is what he put in the post, which kind of makes me a little effy. The evolution of the dog new album never left coming May 19th pre-order now link in the bio. Maybe I should check out the uh, pre-order and see. Yeah, let's see. The album is available for pre-order. So let's see what is actually on here. Just so we can get a, a, a idea of. Are we going to get this new Snoop, you know, Martha Stewart Snoop, which isn't the worst Snoop in the world? Oh, man, they don't say nothing about the tracks. It's 16 tracks. The only record that's actually revealed is number 13, which is uh, called Mount Cushmore featuring Redman, Method Man and B-Rail. I like it already. <laughs> I, I like it already. If you don't know why I would like that combination. You, if you know what Kush is, you know what marijuana is, you know Kush, right? You know Snoop is kind of known to be like a quote-unquote weed rapper. Method Red, definitely weed rappers. And so be real to a certain extent. So there you have it. Uh, Kanye West wanted every song title. Wait, first of all, I didn't do this. Big shout out to Hip Hop DX where I'm getting some of these stories from along with allhiphop.com big shout out to them because honestly they're the ones laying the groundwork i'm just aggregating for you You're making it very easy for some of us who are like yo man i got a job i can't be looking at the website uh but kanye west wanted every song title on watch the throne to feature the n-word but jay-z put an end to that and it really was only one which is this is a family podcast is why i don't say it but and words in Paris. That's why that's the only record. And honestly, I agree with Jay-Z. You know why? Because of the simple fact that even that title makes me a little uneasy. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not a squeamish, yo, why are they using the N-word? I'm not really one of those people. Uh, but I feel like I don't know that that just felt a little odd to me when I first saw that title and 
to think that they would make a, a album called Watch the Throne and then every title has that in it? Nah, I don't know, Kanye. I think you're just reaching. Um, and stop trying to just stop it. Stop it all together. Big Boy has an album coming out. Not Outkast, but we'll get to that right after this. But let's just say this. What, what we know is coming out. Big Boy's new album called Boomiverse. I'm not feeling that title. Uh, will feature Gucci Mane, Organized Noise, Corrupt, and possibly uh, be a double album, I believe. Let me see. Tonight, uh, not sure exactly. Um, let's see. He has a quote here. Or this, what is what is this? Big Boy previewed his new album, Boomiverse, tonight at Electric Lady Sound in NYC. It was 12 tracks, a.k.a. the first sack, a.k.a. the first of two LPs. So apparently he's going to do something like that's uh, two albums, basically. Uh, but that's not really the news. We kind of knew, some of us knew that Big Boy was putting out a new album which I'll definitely check out. I've always checked out his stuff because I'm a big Outkast fan. And Outkast celebrated 23 years of Southern playlistic Cadillac music, their debut album. Um, a lot of people on social media, you know, just posting pictures, showing respect, blah, blah, blah. But then on social media, on Instagram in particular, we see a photo of Outkast and Run the Jewels together. So, of course, the Internet went nuts. And the thing they're thinking is, yo, Outkast is back? Or, yo, Outkast is working on a project with Run the Jewels? That would be crazy. Which it would be. I, I, I can't front. If the four of them got together and just did something, it might be kind of nuts. Uh, but that's not going to happen because Outkast was there uh, at a private show that run the jewels had and uh that was just a backstage photo it took a couple of pictures and the internet went crazy because why you see big boy you see andre 3000 excuse me mr three stacks you see them together you like yo what, what y'all doing what y'all about to re what you doing like you know <laughs> we on edge like you know you about to record Un unfortunately i don't know i think an outcast album at this point is getting in the range of that a tribe called quest album i thought that a tribe called quest album would do a lot to get like the fujis to reunite and outcast to reunite but it kind of didn't so the fujis i've kind of lost hope in thank you lauren hill lauren hill uh but with <laughs> with outcast that could still happen it's just that three stacks is not he's not really into hip-hop he's not inspired I, that's what i get from everything he said i don't think he's he's a, inspired enough to do a project as far as music goes i think he's definitely willing to help others like he's helped kendrick and you can hear that a lot now that i think about it you can hear the, you can hear a lot of three stacks in kendrick also you really can um especially this time around there's a couple of joints where i was like this this feels a lot like but you know he that's cool you know we know he's uh shown up with guest verses here and there and and been a lot of behind the scenes and maybe he's trying to find inspiration uh i don't know how he works with kendrick and not find inspiration but who knows maybe he's just more uh into the fact that you know he's behind the scenes chilling and he gets to say these ideas and blah 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 but he's helping other people get on so who knows uh, designer remember him you know the dude that sounds like future but um i don't know who sounds work whatever designer tweeted that and he deleted it fny radio now i know a lot of people who listen to death star radio a lot of people who probably listen to my podcast on a regular basis know that I'm not just about segregating elements of hip hop or rap. I'm not even offshoots because it all comes from the same place. You know, maybe some of those branches are a little further out from the base of the tree, which I'm definitely willing to co-sign. 
Uh, but it's still all a part of the same family. You know what I'm saying? And for a designer to do what he did kind of puzzled me. And I definitely looked at it and was like, hmm, that's something to talk about on the on the podcast. Uh, let's see. Now, <laughs> Funkmaster Flex, man, grown child. It, this, this dude, dudes be snapping up tweets and Instagrams before dudes can delete it. But Funkmaster Flex Instagram, because this is where this is coming from, it says post and delete with an emoji with a picture of designer showing what he did, right? So before he could delete it, Flex had the goons on it and they downloaded it. Uh, but it says FNY Radio and then it has four emojis with the middle finger up. Now let's see if we can find a reason why. Maybe plays this song in the mix today. Uh, let's see. I don't. I think he's given a, a reason why. Nah, he's nineteen, y'all. He's nineteen. He's still. He's still a little. He's still a little dude. Go to the store, shorty. Uh, but this is the thing, right? I think it's. It just. It's funny to me. You know why? Because I know wherever you live, just like wherever where I live, which I live in the tri-state area, so New York radio is my radio. Uh, but wherever you live, I know you turn on the radio and you say to yourself, damn, they playing all this mumble rap and this dude and that dude. So to hear what can be categorized as a mumble rapper say FNY Radio, I'm pretty sure he's saying it because maybe they're not giving him the spins he thinks he deserves. Now, where have I heard that from before? Oh, yeah, real hip hop, right? That's what y'all call it, right? Real hip hop. Uh, real hip hop isn't on the radio at all. A couple of the music and albums I listen to now are not on the radio. You can check out my video on the B-Roll Network. Want to flow on? What should you be listening to now? Check that out, or just follow me on social media, or whatever. But I just was shocked by that because I'm like, "Wow, really? You? What happened?" <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I think it's one of those things to think about. Now, some may say, oh, yeah, he's not hitting like he was last time. And that's true. But honestly, that's how it works with these rappers now. You know what I'm saying? And it started with the ringtone era. Remember all them dudes? Don't make me start saying names. You remember all them dudes. White T. You know what I'm talking. You know all them dudes I'm talking about. Halle Berry. You know them records, right? Where are those dudes? Where were those dudes the next year? You know what I'm saying? What happens with these microwave artists? Because instead of just calling it mumble rap, I take the ringtone era and I take the quote unquote mumble rap. But I take those dudes that have those one big records and they're brand new. They got the one big record. They got the huge push on the one big record. And when that record starts to go downhill, honestly, sometimes it doesn't even matter if they got another record that's just as good. The industry and more importantly, the fans are done with them. Unless they find some way to reemerge. I think Two Chains is excellent at that because he he could be a dude. Now, of course, he's not the one, but. He's kind of stayed around, you know, Young Thug. A couple of these dudes stay around, stay relevant, stay within the mix. But then there's some, they get wiped off the planet. And when somebody like Designer basically jacks someone else's style, which is why I tell you, you know, hip hop is still in there because people had a problem with that, right? People had a problem with the biting. Uh, what's the reason to listen to you anymore? If all you had was Panda. So it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? I like Panda for my little driving, but I that that's about it. You know, a lot of times I'm listening to other stuff. Speaking of mumble rap, don't expect to hear any mumble rap on the All Eyes on Me soundtrack, which is the soundtrack to the upcoming movie about Tupac Shakur. Uh, or the biopic, I should say, about Tupac Shakur and his life. And the album 
Uh, well, the movie is coming out on June 16th, but the album is supposed to be a double album and it's going to feature, it's basically going to be a tribute album, so to speak. Of course, Pac is going to be all over it, but it's a double album that's a tribute album. So it's going to be uh, a lot of collaborations on there and it's supposed to be produced in the vein of what Tupac wanted to accomplish accomplished before he passed away which was to unite hip-hop artists from different areas now that's possible without having mumble rappers but the only reason why i kind of hesitated was the simple fact that you know you got to make sure you get some southern rappers on there so i don't know maybe maybe they go for like a Lil Wayne or a T.I. or something, somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's going to be, I don't know if this is going to be good. I don't know if it's going to be bad. But the fact that they will come out and just let you <laughs> let you know right away, you will not hit Tupac rapping with designer. I think that makes me feel good because I honestly would not pay it any mind whatsoever if that was the case, to be honest, because... Those things should be separate, in my point of view. That's that's how I feel. Tired of playing Monopoly or Uno or, or whatever you play? Want to go to some old school stuff? Hip hop, you know, but board game style? Or maybe not, but cards. But guess what? There's a, a game that's on Kickstarter right now, right? It's called Verse the Rap Game. It's a game basically what where honestly if you never run before it might be quite fun to hear how whack you are uh or two if you're up and coming dude and you need to sharpen your tools this this sounds like something that might work it's a card game basically and um players draw two cards one card is a theme card the other card is a card that has three rhyming words on it that you have to use basically they give you a theme like let's just say the theme is hot sauce right and there'll be three rhyming words so it could be team steam and mean and you got to stay within hot sauce and keep those three rhyming words as how you end your sentence so you can fill everything in the middle but you got to keep in in mind that you're talking about hot sauce and you could be metaphorical and all that you know like my team mean like you know hot sauce and chicken or whatever whatever that wasn't that good but you know what i mean uh the game features over 400 cards so the combinations will be ridiculous uh it's on kickstarter right now with the the goal being 10,000 I believe at the time of this article on Hip Hop DX uh let's see at the time I believe is about halfway there but if it surpasses 100,000 the company that's making its batch games promises to host a what is this a ballot or a ballet that will be broadcast to the entire world I guess that's a ballot I don't know uh but whatever if you're interested, go to Kickstarter. The game is called Verse, the rap game. Check it out. I believe they have a video there for you to really get an idea of what it's like. Who knows, man? It could be the, the next, you know, get drunk game in your house or something like that. Or definitely something, <laughs> some comedy uh, for for the Instagram folks and the Snapchats. And, you know, you just get your man or, or how about like your pops or something trying to play that game that that'd be that'd be kind of ridiculous now that i think about it and lastly i just want to get to this and and get through it as quick as possible uh but <laughs> i review a lot of hip-hop i show no discrimination on who i listen to because i want to have context if i know somebody's whack but a lot of people well let me not say that if i know somebody might be whack or their project might be whack i and a lot of people favor that artist i want to know why they like that artist i don't care if they like them because of their hustle or their money or whatever i just want to know why you know what i'm saying and then i can listen with those ears 
you know, as opposed to my own. My own can be a little bit biased, uh, but I want to listen. What you know, if you tell me, yo, this is why I like this person, and that's if that's something I never thought about listening to that music, I'll say, okay, well, I'll listen to it from that aspect. And sometimes I can hear what people like about it because maybe I didn't think about it in that way. Maybe I was thinking about, you know, I listened to this Kendrick Lamar and is this that the third. And now I can't really stomach this new Wale album, you know what I'm saying? Because I was listening to that so much and I'm bringing that energy there. So I say all that to say I like to listen for context. So Young M.A. or Young Ma, like some people like to say, put out a Her Story. Uh, well, it's called Her Story. That's the name of her new EP entitled Her Story. If you don't know who she is. She had the uh, hit single last year called Ooh. Um, For some people, it basically sound like Bobby Shmurda's record. Just, yeah, it basically sound like that, right? But on on, on the internet, she's shown that she has a balance between, or there's a balance between underground, true blue, hardcore hip hop styles Cause she's not just rhyming over trap beats and all of that. She rhyming over, you know, hip hop beats that we're accustomed to that we play right here on Death Star Radio, right? And for some people, she's really dope. But she also has that mainstream side, like the record Ooh, that's trying to appeal to that side. And it's a balance. And me knowing that, you know, knowing both sides of that, I've kind of felt like, oh, okay, well. I'll be more inclined to listen to her music and maybe like it for those reasons. But I also have the bias of I'm from Brooklyn. No, I don't like everybody from Brooklyn. But I've also kind of had the bias of hmm, let me let me check it out. So when I listen to it, uh, let me see how many how many records are on here. I think there's about eight eight records on here. The no, it's seven records, right? So it's basically a, a cover with a, a younger version of her with like Cat with Monopoly Money from back in the days uh songs on hands the ma intro hot sauce uh just one of those days self m aid you know like self-made bonnie same set and ooh as a bonus track and i'm here to tell you i kind of like it i, I kind of like it i, I mean i kind of like it also monica you remember monica r&b star back in the days. she's also on here I kind of like it because of the fact that one is short Two, I like different looks as far as, you know, of course, some people are going to automatically off the rip, not like, you know, some of that mumble rap sound, but she's not a mumble rap or a trap sound or whatever. I like the beats in trap. You know, I'll admit that I like the beats, Um, but, you know, she's saying what every rapper says honestly you know what i'm saying to to be honest now is this a go out get it right now because it's crazy no it is not i did not say that you did not hear that from me this is an acquired taste so if you like what young ma has been doing i think you'll like this if you don't i don't think you'll like this if you're somewhere in the middle you might like it. And I think I'm one of those people that was somewhere in the middle where it's like, yeah, it's cool. You know, I'm not going crazy over it. I'm not like she the one or I'm not ranking her amongst the greatest of female MCs. But, I, you know, I do kind of like it. So it is what it is. But that's going to do it for me for this week. You can follow me on social media at Vegas World INC. That be in Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. If you Facebook is your bag, then Facebook.com slash hip hop right now. Hit that like button. Also, know that I have a YouTube channel. It's called the B Roll Network. B R O L E Network. And uh, I do a couple of videos and there's some other videos and different content up there from video games to sports and so much more coming soon. And, and listen, man, listen, subscribe, hit that like button if you like it, comment if you have a comment, and without a doubt, share it with people who you know have the same interest. You know why? Because I am not a critic. I'm a fan. Peace. Dropping on the random. <laughs>